Chin dobre. <laughs> if we have feelings in our hearts of what is important, our personal mission or the mission of our organizations, that's good for us, but it means almost nothing unless we translate it into our heads and make it a, a goal and a strategy to do something about what is in our hearts. This is a very important lesson in fundraising that you will be talking about today, and I will touch just a little bit. So often, we approach fundraising as we will ask people, organizations, businesses, foundations, governments for money. We will write grant proposals. We will personally go out and see if we can get someone to give money to us or to our organizations. But how do we measure our effectiveness in doing this? How do others measure this effectiveness? And in just 15 more minutes, I will try to give you that broad overview and several principles to keep in mind as you do this. I call them perspectives, but these are rules or these are principles that I have found helpful to me. Keep in mind that I offer a perspective that was developed in the United States. My frame of references are from the United States, and I can only do my best to translate them for you. It's very important that you know that when I worked with United Way, I had a different name. My name then was Dick Aft United Way. Dick Aft United Way. What is my name today? Dick Aft, $1.5 billion. <laughs> what? Or when I have my own little company, Dick Aft Philanthropic Leadership. There's a very important perspective, a very important lesson to this. All of us are very fortunate to have professional positions that represent something that is bigger than we are as individual people. We have opportunities, we have reputation that is not built on Dick Aft. Who is Dick Aft? A, a person from America, he lives in Cincinnati, a, a large city in the state of Ohio in the middle of the United States. So that's nice. Dick Aft, $1.5 billion. Oh, what does this mean? Who is this guy? What is the $1.5 billion? Or for 40 years of my life, Dick Aft United Way. It was never about Dick Aft. It was about Dick Aft who represented, who had opportunities, who when acting professionally represented an organization, not himself. The first part as we define fundraising, the public face of fundraising is marketing. If you look at the picture where I have what uh, is commonly called in the United States the three-legged stool, it looks like a milking stool the people who milk cows used to use, very simple. But the three legs are very important. You take one away, it falls down. The first leg in marketing for our fundraising activity is there must be a need. What is it that, that prompts us to ask for money? Secondly, there is some sort of product. There is a need, yes, but what do we do about it? What is the service? And finally is we have a need, we have a service, but how do we make it possible? How do we provide the money so that the service can be conducted. Not just the money to pay for our services, to raise the money or be the administrators, 
but how to find the money to go into the services, to invest in the need, in, in uh, resolving the need, in making things better. There are many ways to do this marketing or do this selling of your service that will meet a need. And I put just a large list down here. You can see the list. But they are all different approaches to asking people to give. Before you ask someone else to give for your program, you must give yourself. And a very effective way to do that is to ask the person that you are approaching, I'm going to ask you for money. But before I do, I would like you to ask me for money. And then I will listen very carefully as you try to find reasons for me to give money. I will listen to your reasons for me to give because they are important to you. And if they are important to you, then I can use them when I ask you to give money. So what are the reasons that people give? Well, here we have the techniques on the chart, and you have them before you. Many different prospects, people that you can ask for money. I've listed them here, oh, many groups, the uh, companies, the individuals, the vendors people with whom you do business, uh, the people who supply uh, the food for your meetings, uh, the place where you rent your office. Does this place wish to be part of your program? Are there uh, companies, parents, leaders that are possibly interested in what you do? And the question is always, who should ask them? Is it possible to uh, learn who are the members of these organizations and what are their interests so that you can use those things as you approach them? How do you measure success? It's a very important perspective that you should consider. And success is measured differently by different stakeholders the people who are important to you. The stakeholders include corporate sponsors, so individual people who give to you, the other groups that we have there, and each of them has their own basis of measuring your success. I listed a number of examples for you as we talk about definitions of success. The Gates Foundation in America cares most about improved world health. Bill Gates personally cares most about do students have access to education? Can students get education? Competing foundations, how would they measure your success? Individual NGOs, how do they measure success? Each one of these groups, your stakeholders for you, has a different basis for measuring the success of your fundraising. Very often, it's how much of the money that you raise will I get. For a corporate sponsor, very often, it's how much publicity will the company receive. Or, Will there be any problem for the company if we give money to this program? Could it possibly become a problem for us if we are identified with this program instead of another one? But each of your stakeholders will have a different measure of success. What is our job as professionals? Earlier we saw needs and uh, the fundraising, the programs, the people, the organizations who have the funds to meet those needs. 
Our job is to connect, to be the professionals who connect the resources to the needs. To do this, we need to understand the needs, and we need to understand the individuals, the companies, the foundations that can meet these needs. We are the connectors. There are only a few people who have the capacity to give the kind of money that you want. And there are many needs. So our job as fundraisers is to define what makes us different and why is it that we are the ones who should receive the grants, to receive the contributions, receive the payroll deductions, whatever uh, uh, way of raising money we use, how do we distinguish ourselves among the many needs? As I look at you in this audience, I see many people. Each of you represents a different NGO or a foundation. Do you compete with one another for contributions? Many times you do. Do you cooperate with one another to attend programs like this and share your ideas? Sometimes, but sometimes you're very uh, cautious about sharing. It's hard to share your practices with competitors. But at the same time, if you are to learn from each other, then uh, you uh, need to share these things. Share these things. Uh, in America, what we have found is that we have developed over many years a culture of giving. That culture of giving, where companies and individuals are very proud to give and very public about their giving, uh, comes because we share what we do best. It's like our saying, all boats rise on the tide. When the water comes in, your boat goes up. And so do all of the other boats. So if there is more money given, you will get more money. If there is cooperation and learning from one another, then all boats will rise. All of your programs will be more successful if you share your best practices. What do you care about the most? My family. Your family. Oh, and second most? <laughs> oh, it could be animals. Your animals. Oh, very important. Well, I happen to represent an NGO that does not deal with families and does not deal with animals, and it's very nice to know you. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Good. The lesson that's important to me is uh, this lesson. First, I ask questions, and then I sell with my ears. What did I hear her say? Her interest is family and animals, and this is not my purpose, so I thank you very much. It's nice to meet you. But if my purpose is education, perhaps, and you were to say, I care a lot about education, <coughs> then I know that here is an opportunity for me to talk more about why do you care? And do you think it would be possible to be interested in what I do? But it's a very professional approach. Very often in uh, American fundraising, we see beggars, people who stand on the corner with a cup to say, oh, uh, please give to me. I have no food. I have no place to stay. Uh, I have no job. Uh, are you beggars? No. I don't think so. I think you are true professionals. And professionals are people who have a mission. They believe in their mission very deeply. They have a passion for what they do in their hearts. 
and they have translated this into goals and strategies that they can measure. And they have talked with their stakeholders about how will you measure my success? How will we know when I have done things that are successful? Will it be just to have more money? Or will it be to have more children educated? Or more families stay together? Or more nutrition? Or better environment? Or what is it that you wish to measure in what we do? And then we develop our programs and our strategies so that what is in our hearts can become part of what people can see and understand. Thank you. Thank you.